With our own ears we have heard it, O God. Our ancestors have told us about it, about the great things you did in their time in the days of long ago, how you yourself drove out the heathen and established your people in their land, how you punished the other nations and caused your own to prosper. Your people did not conquer the land with their swords. They did not win it by their own power. It was by your power and your strength, by the assurance of your presence, which showed that you loved them. You are my King and my God. You give victory to your people, and by your power we defeat our enemies. I do not trust in my bow or in my sword to save me, but you have saved us from our enemies and defeated those who hate us. We will always praise you and give thanks to you forever, but now you have rejected us and let us be defeated. You no longer march out with our armies. You made us run from our enemies, and they took for themselves what was ours. You allowed us to be slaughtered like sheep. You scattered us in foreign countries. You sold your own people for a small price as though they had little value. Our neighbors see what you did to us, and they mock us and laugh at us. You have made us a joke among the nations. They shake their heads at us in scorn. I am always in disgrace. I am covered with shame from hearing the sneers and insults of my enemies and those who hate me. All this has happened to us, even though we have not forgotten you or broken the covenant you made with us. We have not been disloyal to you. We have not disobeyed your commands. Yet you left us helpless among wild animals. You abandoned us in deepest darkness. If we had stopped worshiping our God and prayed to a foreign God, you would surely have discovered it, because you know our secret thoughts. But it is on your account that we are being killed all the time, that we are treated like sheep to be slaughtered. Wake up, Lord. Why are you asleep? Rouse yourself. Don't reject us forever. Why are you hiding from us? Don't forget our suffering and trouble. We fall crushed to the ground. We lie defeated in the dust. Come to our aid. Because of your constant love, save us. God is our shelter and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not be afraid, even if the earth is shaken and mountains fall into the ocean depths, even if the seas roar and rage and the hills are shaken by the violence. There is a river that brings joy to the city of God, to the sacred house of the Most High. God is in that city, and it will never be destroyed. At early dawn He will come to its aid. Nations are terrified. Kingdoms are shaken, God thunders, and the earth dissolves. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come and see what the Lord has done. See what amazing things He has done on earth. He stops wars all over the world. He breaks bows, destroys spears, and sets shields on fire. Stop fighting, He says, and know that I am God, supreme among the nations, supreme over the world. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The Lord is great and is to be highly praised in the city of our God on his sacred hill. Zion, the mountain of God, is high and beautiful. The city of the great king brings joy to all the world. God has shown that there is safety with him inside the fortresses of the city. The kings gathered together and came to attack Mount Zion. But when they saw it, they were amazed. They were afraid and ran away. There they were seized with fear and anguish like a woman about to bear a child, like ships tossing in a furious storm. We have heard what God has done, and now we have seen it in the city of our God, the Lord Almighty. He will keep the city safe forever. Inside your temple, O God, we think of your constant love. You are praised by people everywhere, and your fame extends over all the earth. You rule with justice. Let the people of Zion be glad. You give right judgments. Let there be joy in the cities of Judah. People of God, walk around Zion and count the towers. Take notice of the walls and examine the fortresses, so that you may tell the next generation, This God is our God forever and ever. He will lead us for all time to come. Hear this, everyone. Listen, all people everywhere, great and small alike, rich and poor together. My thoughts will be clear. I will speak words of wisdom. I will turn my attention to Proverbs and explain their meaning as I play the harp. I am not afraid in times of danger when I am surrounded by enemies. 
by evil people who trust in their riches and boast of their great wealth. We can never redeem ourselves. We cannot pay God the price for our lives, because the payment for a human life is too great. What we could pay would never be enough to keep us from the grave, to let us live forever. Anyone can see that even the wise die as well as the foolish and stupid. They all leave their riches to their descendants. Their graves are their homes forever. There they stay for all time, though they once had lands of their own. Our greatness cannot keep us from death. We will still die like the animals. See what happens to those who trust in themselves, the fate of those who are satisfied with their wealth. They are doomed to die like sheep, and death will be their shepherd. The righteous will triumph over them as their bodies quickly decay in the world of the dead far from their homes. But God will rescue me. He will save me from the power of death. Don't be upset when someone becomes rich, when his wealth grows even greater. He cannot take it with him when he dies. His wealth will not go with him to the grave. Even if someone is satisfied with this life and is praised because he is successful, he will join all his ancestors in death where the darkness lasts forever. Our greatness cannot keep us from death. We will still die like the animals. The Almighty God, the Lord, speaks. He calls to the whole earth from east to west. God shines from Zion, the city perfect in its beauty. Our God is coming, but not in silence. A raging fire is in front of Him, a furious storm around Him. He calls heaven and earth as witnesses to see Him judge His people. He says, Gather my faithful people to me, those who made a covenant with me by offering a sacrifice. The heavens proclaim that God is righteous, that he himself is judge. Listen, my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, Israel. I am God, your God. I do not reprimand you because of your sacrifices and the burnt offerings you always bring me. And yet I do not need bulls from your farms or goats from your flocks. All the animals in the forest are mine, and the cattle on thousands of hills. All the wild birds are mine, and all living things in the fields. If I were hungry, I would not ask you for food, for the world and everything in it is mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Let the giving of thanks be your sacrifice to God, and give the Almighty all that you promised. Call to me when trouble comes. I will save you, and you will praise me. But God says to the wicked, Why should you recite my commandments? Why should you talk about my covenant? You refuse to let me correct you. You reject my commands. You become the friend of every thief you see, and you associate with adulterers. You are always ready to speak evil. You never hesitate to tell lies. You are ready to accuse your own relatives and to find fault with them. You have done all this, and I have said nothing. So you thought that I am like you. But now I reprimand you and make the matter plain to you. Listen to this, you that ignore me, or I will destroy you, and there will be no one to save you. Giving thanks is the sacrifice that honors me, and I will surely save all who obey me. As a deer longs for a stream of cool water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for you, the living God. When can I go and worship in your presence? Day and night I cry, and tears are my only food. All the time my enemies ask me, Where is your God? My heart breaks when I remember the past, when I went with the crowds to the house of God and led them as they walked along. A happy crowd, singing and shouting praise to God. Why am I so sad? Why am I so troubled? I will put my hope in God, and once again I will praise Him, my Savior and my God. Here in exile my heart is breaking, and so I turn my thoughts to him. He has sent waves of sorrow over my soul. Chaos roars at me like a flood, like waterfalls thundering down to the Jordan from Mount Hermon and Mount Mazar. May the Lord show his constant love during the day, so that I may have a song at night, a prayer to the God of my life. To God, my defender, I say, Why have you forgotten me? Why must I go on suffering from the cruelty of my enemies? I am crushed by their insults as they keep on asking me, Where is your God? Why am I so sad? Why am I so troubled? I will put my hope in God, and once again I will praise Him, my Savior and my God.